What's good, everybody? Uh, it's a good day. I got uh, a special guest up in her. Y'all can probably can see right now, but I'm not going to say his name for a second. If you're tuning in on this YouTube, then uh, we would love for you to check out uh, the Get Level Podcast Network's other podcast. We got the Dogs Podcast, where they talk about the Browns. Then we got um, then we got the summit um, where Pastor Rob shares a lot about his uh, his previous sermon. So you need to check that out for show. And then uh, also I'm live tonight, Tuesdays and Thursdays, Twitch.tv forward slash Persia Ghana. Um, and uh, yeah, just don't forget to subscribe, click that bell so you get the notification every time we get a new video up. All right, but anyways. I think that's, a, oh no, the Get Level Podcast Network merch store, almost forgot, getlevelpod.com forward slash store. Yes. We yeah, get, get some merch with that logo in the background there. Chia, chia, <laughs> and all the other stuff. Hey, the Get Level po- Podcast logo is nasty, let's just be real. Um, but yeah, all right, let's get to it. So we got a special guest in the building, I feel like Breakfast Club, special guest in the building, um, this dude was... Uh, it started as a, we'll get into this, but it started as a a little rivalry. You know, I was salty because I was supposed to be the best athlete in the age group. And then I come to meet this behemoth in sixth grade, fifth grade. Like, who the heck is this dude who, if you're as tall as he is, you're supposed to be uncoordinated. But this dude was running faster than everybody, jacking three. So I was so confused. But um, he also was my number one receiver. Sorry, Matt Reinhart. He was number one <laughs> receiver. And uh, turned into the rivalry turned into be one of my best friends, and that is Mister Daniel Ift. I was gonna say Michael, but you know we ain't going too deep. Daniel Ift, man. Hey, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. How you feeling? Hey, I appreciate you having me. I feel elite. Uh, <laughs> no, it's great. You know, I want to start out first by just you know, you know, congratulating you on on this on this podcast, and we can get into this a little bit later. But we've yeah. talked about what's going on in, in the world with our pandemic, which started as a pandemic, you know, just doing things that we never thought we would do or kind of having that extra nudge to do it. And uh, with what you and Josh are doing, not only here, but in the community with the podcast, because I know a lot of people are excited about it. Yeah. It's really cool. And, and, and you and I talked about just how authentic you are with it, which is so mm, unique. Well, and you're not conforming it. to what regular podcasts are. You're doing it in your own way. So big, uh, big ups. <laughs> what I say, big, big kudos <laughs> to you. Well, I appreciate that, Daniel. Um, now I'm pretty sure I, I went to Facebook and we got some questions, but we'll get to that eventually. Um, but I just kind of want to just have a conversation. We've been having our conversations over zoom. So what Daniel was talking about with the pandemic, you know, me and Daniel didn't really stay in contact as much as we wanted to, you know, our, our group, I ain't going to tell you our name. That's our private name, but, uh, me, Micah, Daniel, Eric, uh, Brandon Burdett, um, we all, you know, have a little group that we all hung, hung around and, uh, you know, we were really close in high school. Um, I was the best athlete out of all them. You know, it was voted in the yearbook. Um, <laughs> but anyways. Rumor is they lost like <laughs> half the votes. So, But, um, but no, nah, uh, they've been all my close friends for pretty much my whole life. And uh, we just want to, we, we'll get into, you know, how that all started. But Daniel, man. This, this pandemic has made us get, like you said, out of our comfort zone. And I didn't want to start this podcast. And I think I mentioned this before. I was just afraid. People don't care what I'm saying, you know. Um, that's why I try to have cool people on the show. But Josh was like, you know what, 5.30 Tuesday, get in here. We're doing a podcast. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks, Josh. You pushed me. He said, no procrastinating. <laughs> so Josh is the reason it started. But thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Appreciate <laughs> Anybody it. Anybody out there that likes the show, you're welcome as well. <laughs> <laughs> And if y'all want to start a podcast or sponsor this podcast, hit us up. You know what I'm saying? We about to come out there. I'm wearing a shirt from Built Basics. You know, if y'all want to sponsor us, Built, I uh, appreciate it. You can, you know what I'm saying? Just hit me up on the Twitters. No, I'm just, <laughs> anyway, let's just get into it. I'm being out of control. But um, as y'all can see, Daniel's representing Minnesota. I have to. So uh, tell us tell us why you represent Minnesota. Like, what you doing in your life right now? Yeah, so I am... Uh 
for those who don't know, so I've been going on year four at University of Minnesota. Four. Yeah, a long wow. time, man. Um, director of football operations, so I handle all of our, our budgets, our, our travel, you know, like, you know, planes, hotels, buses, um, anything that's in our facility, um, different types of projects going on. Right now we're about to finish up a, a big project. We're calling a recovery suite that's uh, really awesome. We're doing a lot of things for our student athletes just to, you know, focus on their well-being, focus on their health, mental health too. And uh, that's what's been one of those really cool um, experiences that I never saw coming that came and, and it's turned into something that, you know, I could definitely, God willing, see myself being there for a very, very long time because um, it's just that's an amazing awesome. place and I love it. And, uh, but again, it's just really unique how the whole circumstance kind of came about and, you know, just kind of living every day is kind of how I live my life now. Um, learned a lot, failed a lot throughout my life. That's helped me to grow into who I am now. So it's been awesome. That's what's up. And for you guys who don't know, Daniel, the fail he's talking about is the uh, first game that he was on ESPN and he dropped the wide open touchdown pass at Ball State University. <laughs> it's funny just because he never dropped a pass in history and then he he's caught balls with five guys around him and then <laughs> he's wide open. Anyway, we won't talk about that. Now, um, uh, I love that you're talking about mental health because uh, before I even started this podcast, I kind of was talking to, was it the Adams board or was it the ADC? I don't know. Both of them, but Both yeah, it was the Adams board. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've been a big proponent, proponent of that, and I'm loving that everybody's coming out and, uh, you know, people like Kevin Love and, and stuff that people, it's just making aware, you know. Um, a lot of people don't know about it, and it's been a stigma in sports, and I know I dealt with it and just – lacking confidence like you always knew me socially my confidence is through the roof I'll go talk to anybody like I don't care right but I didn't necessarily always have that confidence you know on the mound at all times and the fact that you guys are you know investing in your kids because a lot of times you know college sports gets a bad rap I know I've seen it but luckily the experiences I had with my college coaches they cared about me you know poured into me and it seems like that you guys are having a good and I know I just watched Remember the Titans with Purse last night or two nights ago. And, uh, you know, what Julius say in there, you know, attitude re- reflect leadership. So, yeah, who's your – you guys the captain is, you know, Mr. – is it P.J. Fleck? P.J. Yeah, Fleck. <laughs> well, I've heard great things about him. And, you know, just talk about, you know, obviously you want to be at this program for a while, and I'm assuming that is – uh, a lot of that has contributed because of the type of leader he is and what he's doing for the program. So yeah, definitely. That. I mean, it's not a you know, and it's it's you talk about mental health. It's really interesting because it's different for everybody. Um, and I think at times people only think that it can be for a certain individual that maybe only you know a sports figure or maybe someone who's uh, you know high leader in in government or this that or the other. But for me, you know, it wasn't sports. You know, I got nervous before games, but everybody gets nervous before games. Yeah. You know, for me, from a mental standpoint. It really affected me when I was uh, when I was unemployed a couple of years ago, and I know this isn't talking about coach, and I'll get into no, coaching a little awesome. bit. But you know, for me, it got into it when I lost my job, and I was living in Indianapolis, and Kate and I just got a house, and really, really dark times. You go from being a, a player mm-hmm. or an athlete where everybody knows you and you're the center of attention, um, to getting out of football, to breaking a you know, what I considered a normal job, yep. a shell job, great yep. job with great people, it just didn't work out. So then I'm unemployed. And this is where the most humbling part of my life ever happened because I had a new house with Kate and, and our dog and I didn't make any money for yep. six months. I was collecting government checks. I was making 400 and I think it was like $20 a week. And that's all I had. So my income severely sank and Kate carried us for six months. That's until what I, is about. No question. It really is. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. uh, uh, and so I didn't have anything, you know, and I was just super depressed all the time. I didn't really know what my worth in the world was. Um, didn't talk to anybody about it because you don't want to talk to somebody about yeah, it. You don't want course. someone to feel as if you're weak. Um, and, and it was just, every day was the same. Just wake up and ask the same question. What is your worth? And then I had the opportunity to interview at Minnesota and I had a phone call, had some really good recommendations from people I worked with in the past, which led me to get there. And it, to be honest with you, was such a, that was the first step for me in really understanding of why you're placed where you're supposed to be and getting around coach and just his positive infectious energy and how he pours into others made me want to do the exact same thing to, to our student athletes and in a better way than I did before. Cause before I was always thinking, Oh, I'm going to go be in the NFL or I'm going to do this and that when I was a younger kid in the profession as opposed to living every day to the fullest. And 
And people ask me, well, what are your goals in life? And to be honest with you, I say, I don't have any goals. Like my goal is just to be as best as I can be on this day. Mm. And then tomorrow will be better than I was today. Well, one of our mottos at Minnesota with coaches, change your best, be better today than you were yesterday. And it's just like, wow, that was like one of the first things that clicked with me. And it was so amazing to me because I, instead of living for that next thing, I was just living for now. And I was fully pouring myself into our coaches and our administration and especially our players. And that's just, it just continued to grow throughout the four years now that I've been there. And until probably, if I'm being truthfully honest, until the last year going into six months with COVID, you know, my marriage with my wife, I love her to death, six years we've been together and she's carried me through everything. Um, you know, the last six months, we've just kind of taken off to cool. a level we haven't been before. And maybe it's been some of the, the Zoom interactions we've had and maybe it hasn't, or maybe it's been the, just the more intentional um, living we've been doing together. We're sitting on For our sure. front porch or just, you know, finding that little piece of paradise each and every day within our home um, that's really taken off. And you know, going back to coach, he talks about your compass, like surround yourself with elite people. And, um, you know, I've been fortunate to have a lot of elite people in my life, but really defining who, <laughs> but really defining who that compass is. Yeah. Um, you know, I have a group of friends in Indianapolis who I'm extremely close with that are part of my compass, but I have another compass with obviously uh, you, Mike and, and Eric yeah. um, that are extremely amazing human beings who push me to levels that I probably couldn't achieve other ways. So, you know, it's just funny how a lot of the things in life that I was searching for, I was able to find them with coach Fleck and it's only been able to just continue to enhance my life. That's what's so, up. That, that's funny the way you explain that. It's how, it's a little hot. I f sort of feel that way about your dad and, mm -hmm. you know, how he led us as a group. Obviously, you had a different, I guess, vantage point from your relationship, obviously, but me just being more football. And, yes, he did have a little bit of a father uh, figure-ism <laughs> to me and the way I looked at him, but it was like it was just always positive. Even when, you know, he would be on our case, mm -hmm. It wasn't, it didn't feel like he was like mad at us. It was just feel like, okay, he wants it better out of us. It's not like he's like, oh, you know, there's a lot of people just have empty, you know, criticism, but I just always felt like with your dad, something, there was something that was going to come out of it. Um, but like just the, the simple fact that here you talk about, you know, uh, I, I feel weird. It's like <laughs> coach Fleck, I'll just call him coach Fleck, but, uh, just to hear him talking about that and, you know, the, the compass, I like to hear different people, their, their different sayings on how they do things or mm -hmm. just the way they relate, relate to you. And we've had in previous podcasts, people talk about that. Uh, Steve called them Pete isms because Pete is the, mm -hmm. the guy who was above him. And it's just funny to hear, you know, different people's outtakes and how they kind of inspire different kids. And, uh, but yeah, like the mental health, man, it's, there's no, there's no race, there's no gender, there's no, it's nothing to it just, it, it, it'll just dig in in certain different people, parts of life. And, and now that we're being more aware about it, I think it's, it's going to, you know, we'll be able to attack it better instead of it being kind of like a, you know, you don't want to be, a, especially as a male, right. <laughs> you know, I was afraid to talk about it. You know, I had, uh, I might be having actually, um, a, a, an ex mental coach for the Cleveland Indians on the, on the show here soon. Her name is Cecilia Clark. And she was like very instrumental helping me like mm -hmm. attack this thing like early on, you know, and I, I didn't, I was in denial, like, no, I'm good. Like, I'm all right. But <laughs> well, one of the greatest things about just the forward progression of mental health and I'm no expert, I'm not saying that I am, but you know, one, however many people listen to this particular podcast, there may be one individual who's just thinking, Oh, I know Daniel and Percy were really good buddies in, in high school. And it's really unique that they've carried the relationship to be 32, 31 years old, but they're talking about mental health. Like, that's so cool. Like I've, I'm, I may need to go talk to somebody, you know, even, you know, I kind of opened up to Micah about some other things um, that I've been dealing with. And just to talk to somebody about it has been so just, um, you know, we'll probably get into this a little bit later too. Um, but just to talk to him just made me more, you know, open up the book of, of faith yeah. in the Bible even more. And I've talked to mm. you about that yeah. and things yeah. that you've yeah. kind of nudged me in a sense to do. And, uh, you know, anybody out there who's really just struggling with it, I would strongly encourage you just to speak to somebody, anybody. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, at the end of the day, the worst case scenario is you just have a conversation with somebody. Yeah. You know, and that's just, uh, it's a huge piece for our program at least. And yeah. I think our players have really enjoyed that. We're huge advocates for it. That's what's up. That's what's up. And I just think... You know, with 
obviously COVID stinks and all this, but it's just brought so many things like my church, uh, live streaming stuff now. And it's just, it's just, obviously it's been a lot of things, people getting, like we talked about before, getting people out of their comfort zone. I think it's just made people better. Mm -hmm. Um, even though it does kind of suck, but like I was listening to a podcast earlier, I forget who it was, but they were talking about you either have fell back in love with your wife, what you were just talking about, or, you know, someone's going to find a, a dead body wrapped up somewhere. So <laughs> obviously you, it's, it's, uh, mm. you know, pulled you guys stronger because you're probably just so busy. You're worrying about, especially you, you're talking about you were struggling when you weren't, you know, working. Mm. Then you're like, you probably got this job in Minnesota and you're like, Oh, I'm going to take this full force. And I'm, you know, I'm going to be, you know, a provider for my family and you kind of get tunnel vision and it's just, it just happens. That's how yeah. I would say the majority of people happen. But obviously you guys are able to settle down with this COVID and kind of just look at each other and just, yeah. And it, it does, it changes things, you know, you start to think, oh, well, you know, yeah, I love my wife and, you know, we spend time together, but you weren't really spending time, but now you are, so. You just have real conversations and just, I think a big thing too, and we've talked about it, it's just the power of one of self-talk, but two, just the power of positivity. Like so many people in our world and we, we deal with it every day, just different types of people who just, they're so negative in how they talk and their perception of the world, I mean especially now we just need so much positivity in our world to bring people together. Mm -hmm. And, um, and the, the, you know, sadly we've lost that, but it's really, um, you know, from Kate and I, it's just, we've continued to just pour positivity into each other That's what's and, up. you know, doing things with Micah and, and the Bible study we've been doing and just celebrating each other with different things. And Kate and I started doing that too. So it's been awesome. That's what's up. That's what's up. Um, I know we've been talking about COVID a lot. Uh, I did have one question. So like if you were, I didn't, the question was, what advice do you want to give to, you know, college athletes right now? I'm going to switch it up and say, hey, 17, 18 year old Daniel is, a, you know, looking at his college outlook and trying to figure out where he wants to go, how he wants to do this. What advice would you give to 17 year old Daniel about, you know, maybe where to go or, you know, how to deal and cope with the COVID? It probably might maybe mess with your recruiting process, uh, a lot of things going on, and you just had to kind of adjust. Same with the, the schools. They're not able to mm -hmm. get out and recruit like they wanted to. But how would you – or what would you say to your your old self? Because, um, you know, you old as dirt now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the seventh-year-old Daniel, what advice would you have to him? You know, honestly, I would just say, you know, with what's going on, turn it into a positive somehow, some way. Like, know that you're supposed to be where you're supposed to go. You know, I had one offer at, coming out of uh, out of high school to go into Ball State, and that's where I was supposed to be. And ultimately, the end goal was I met my wife. Um, sure. And so, you know, go where you're supposed to go, but at the same time, you know, take care of yourself and do the right things. And I think a lot of these high school kids have had the time to really sit back and think about what is important in their lives. Um, you know, I had the chance to hear Carl Anthony Town speak a couple of weeks ago, and, and the thing he said that really struck me is how much he doesn't associate with social media. He uses it as a platform. Mm -hmm. Actually, someone runs it for him <laughs> as a platform for different um, charity opportunities and community service opportunities, and that's how he gets his voice heard. Gotcha. But a lot of things he does is for him and his family, and that's his main focus. And I think I've now it's thirty two. I've kind of done the same thing, kind of reshifted my focus on what's truly important in my life, and what's truly important for my wife and, and my entire family. Um, but I think kids right now have an unbelievable opportunity because they've been stripped of everything that they've known. And so you really get to do more things in terms of having a real conversation with somebody, you Imagine. know, like even if it's not, if it's FaceTime because you can't go over to someone's house. So you get to have that type of dialogue with somebody and you get to learn and understand people because you can't just drive over there anymore. Yeah. Um, you know, that's one thing. And then people, how creative they're getting with workouts. You know, we talked a little bit about it too, but it's just unique how creative everyone's getting. Um, but I think it's also very unique how we've kind of had to take a step back and everyone's really had to see what's important in their lives. What can you really live without? And what do you truly need to be happy in your life? So, you know, I think I feel bad for every, all the seniors that have graduated because they were, um, you know, denied some of the things that you're supposed to experience as a high school mm -hmm. um, student athlete or even a student. Yeah. But, you know, the world's not lost. They're still going to have opportunities to go to college and, and to succeed in their own way. It's just a different way. But, you know, I think the class of 2020 has a really unique opportunity to – start to make the world a better place because they 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 were denied a lot of things yeah um but uh, but i'm excited for the future yeah i think that there's a lot of intelligent young people right now who can do a lot of really good things and i think uh the so far with the conversation we've been having i guess is and what you said the the 
the corner you've turned kind of relates to me is the uh, Michael Jordan. Well, I guess I should say Chicago Bulls documentary or Michael Jordan story. Um, it just talked about how great he was because he was able to be in the present mm -hmm. and looks like COVID has kind of made us be in the present more. But um, just to break it up a little bit, uh, I'll go to some of our questions. I'll maybe do one or two and then we'll get back <clears throat> on our highly intelligent deep dive. <laughs> you didn't think it was going to get this deep to start be like, oh, I'll just talk sports. But no, I like it. I like it. I'd rather 32, have this way. 32-year-old men now. So Joey F says, who is his favorite oldest male cousin? I only have one. Okay. So, <laughs> so I guess that's you, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I'll go. Matt Reinhardt says, biggest play of the 2006 season. Ooh, I like this one. Ooh, that's a great question. I'll tell you Do you what. even remember? <laughs> There were so many. I just my memory's a little fogged from the O five Maslin game. Oh my god! Don't remember, but I'll tell you what. I was I had someone asked me a question a couple weeks ago too about uh, Dover uh, Dover football, and I they asked about receivers, and I said, you know, playing with um, Matt and nobody in the history of Dover football, I will go on the table can run the chill break screen Ooh. better than Matt Reinhardt. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so fun. Like, I had one of the most joyous times in football blocking that corner who thought they were going to press Matt up. And all you had to do was just nudge him a little bit, and Matt just <laughs> <laughs> and just takes off. I mean. That's why Matt's like, hey, I should be your favorite receiver. You threw it two yards, and then it turned into a 60-yard. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you were nice. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I threw it, like, maybe negative yards, and you were <laughs> That was I about mean, a 90% yeah. success rate, wasn't it? <laughs> I mean, our <laughs> Cambridge 06, Matt has, like, feels like 18 touchdowns like he's just all over the place running jailbreaks and then running slip screens hey don't blow up his head you know matt you're all right bro <laughs> i don't know what my favorite play in 06 was man there were so many of them that was a fun year yeah i would say my favorite is um question was for me uh, i'm just <laughs> my favorite is probably even though i underthrew this to you was the uh steubenville game when I, you were open. I took a little long, like usual, to get you the ball. But um, I just, <laughs> just launched it, got destroyed. It's just like the typical play where the quarterback drops back, throws the ball, gets hit, uh, and then the ball's flying, slow motion, and then you catch it. It was it was amazing. But was I also like my juke, my nasty juke. Anyways, um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get back to it. Um, so I'm glad, you know, we got, you know, where you're at in the the Minnesota and now I find myself, you know, kind of rooting for Minnesota. Never really did that before. Appreciate um, that. <laughs> supporting your friends. Yes. Uh, uh, but now we talked about, you know, you and uh, Kate, your marriage and, and your growth and mindset. So you already covered some of the stuff, you know, you cheating, um, moving forward without, you know, going. <laughs> it's not, I didn't, have the, I didn't have the questions before. <laughs> Don't tell Mike of that. He's gonna be like, "Oh, you did it for Daniel. Yeah. You did it for Daniel." But um, I kind of would just like. So we already kind of touched on it, but I just want to reiterate it. So like, you did say you want to take a day at a time, and Le mm -hmm. you know another great basketball player talks about that is because LeBron always gets talked to, uh, asked the question about, "Hey, you know NBA Finals or championship this year?" And he goes, "Hey, we just want to get better every day when mm -hmm. we go to practice, when we play in the game." So I think that is very important. But like, like what kind of if we were thinking, if you were thinking of a big picture, and I know this is a weird question to ask, but like, what impact would you want to have on the world? Like, and you can answer this whatever way you want to. So it can be what impact do you want to have on the world, or what do you want to be remembered for, or you know, do you want to be re remembered for you know, red and gray number seven, uh, lining up to catch a pass? You want to be remembered as you know, inspirational, you know, I guess mentor for these you know student athletes or students that you run into on campus um or just all of it <laughs> i think it's more of being remembered as what you do for your student athletes you know being a part of the dover community will never leave me and it'll always be something that i'm very fond of and we talk about the memories that we've created throughout those those four years but i think it's just what we can do or what i can do every day for our student athletes you know help them to have a voice especially in Minneapolis now. Mm -hmm. And I've, I could not be more proud of, of what our young men are doing and how they're standing up and they're using their platforms and they're using their voices to cultivate, to start, to create that change in our, in our city, in our community. And I know, I know social media doesn't see this um, like I do because I live there, 
But last Friday, I did a community service opportunity on Lake Street. And Lake Street was one of the areas that was like severely yeah. burned down. Okay. Right? There's nothing there. Wow. And so the Cub Foods and the Target, all those were looted and burned as well. And so what Cub Foods has been doing is the surrounding areas and the suburban areas have been collecting goods. And they've been coming down to this location on Lake Street. And they've been serving and giving to the people who live in these communities that don't have grocery stores anymore. And so it's the second time they've, they've done it. And I got the opportunity to go with some of our student athletes on Friday. We had a bunch that went two weeks before that. And just hearing their stories, the people that live there, and, and having our student athletes from seniors all the way down to true freshmen who just got on campus the week before, and having them wanting to be a part of it, that made me proud, but also, in a sense, I want to say happy, but yeah. like there's young men in our, our society who they want to be a part of the change. Yeah. black and white and it was so like it touched me so much to just see them interact with these people and to hear their stories and you know i talked to one lady as i was taking stuff to her car and i just asked how close do you live and she's like i live two blocks away and i said so this is everywhere you came to get your groceries and she said yes and she said but i love coming down here every two weeks to get my groceries now excuse me because you like the student athletes are here the vikings are here we're there uh, the twins are there. Um, the T wolves are there, and so it's so unique to see that. Um, and I just want to be remembered as a guy who not only, you know, not that I'm an authoritative figure, but <laughs> I, I don't just sit there and make decisions. Like I want to be as coach and Coach Flex is a huge example. Like he gets out and does these community services with us. Nice. And that's how I want our student athletes to remember me as, as a as a, an ops guy who he would do things with us. He would help us, but he'd also be with us. He'd make everything better for us. And that's what I want to be remembered of is because if you can teach our young men or even one of them one life lesson of serving and giving or just treating your wife better or reaching out to your friends and they take that with them, then you do it. You do, you're doing your part in the world and in the society, then they can do the same thing. But, you know, I just, I just, I'm really excited about our young men and things that they've done over the last four weeks um, because they've used their voices and their platforms. And it's been so encouraging for me. And, and help me to even educate myself even more than, yeah. than I was. I know I'm leading into a different topic, but, you know, talking with you and Micah and doing some other things with, with Micah and, and connecting with other individuals and learning more and educating not only myself, but then taking what I've learned from group settings and educating other individuals. I mean, that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. and, and to start the change, um, you know, and it's just, it's so sad and, and blows my mind that, know your grandparents and my grandparents and Micah's grandparents they probably at the time never thought that things that they witnessed when they were kids and teens mm -hmm. they would be here in the elder part of their lives but um so I'm so encouraged just by our young men and how they're handling everything and how they are using their voices collectively yeah and, I mean I feel like there's I don't know if this is you know I just envision they're always there's always going to be a group of people who are ignorant or just, you know, just not, they're not good people. There's always right. going to be that group. But I feel, even though with all this madness and stuff, I still feel like as a whole, you know, we're coming together as much as we can, uh, way better than, you know, prior to the George, the George Floyd, uh, you know. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, you know, it's always going to be a, grow, a growing process, and I feel like we're, we're heading in the right direction. Um and that's another thing I kind of attribute to COVID because there was a lot of distractions before when it was going on. Now there's none. And you just kind of, all right, you know, you're kind of forced to, to deal with it uh, head on. And I, I, I think we're, we're doing a pretty good job. Uh, the one thing I did want to talk about when you were talking about uh, your kids or kids, your student athletes. Oh, I don't have any kids. <laughs> I have 120 young men I, yes. I work with. Yes. But I mean, so I know I was a big proponent of doing volunteer work and, you know, just getting out in the community no matter where I was. Mm -hmm. And I was in minor league baseball. You were all over. But you kind of, as an athlete or someone who is serving, you kind of take from it sometimes more than the people you're serving. You kind of, you know, you get the perspective of how, you know, how blessed you are, one. And then, two, you know, what your actions really mean to other people and it kind of gives you like a, huh, okay, you know, and you get a different aspect. So when you get all like what we talked about before is you get your blinders on as a student athlete football, you know, film, lift, practice, game, film, lift, practice, game. You kind of forget like, 
you know, hey, you know, my opinion matters, my actions matter, um, you know, and it kind of, I think it helps translate onto the field, you know, oh, like, yeah. okay, all this stuff matters. It's not just going through the motions out here. You know, kids look up to me no matter, or just regular humans, like, just look up to me mm-hmm. for what I do. And, and like you said, they're using their platform. So I just, I think it's, it's, it's neat that those moments uh, have an impact both ways. Um, and I mean, I'm pretty sure you agree. I see you shaking. Oh, 100% yeah. just because I've, I'm going to be honest though, when I was in, in college, I, I was one of those guys that thought the same thing, like, all right, if I go to the children's hospital, it's, they don't know who I am. It's not that big of a deal to them. I can skip this one and, and just go hang out with friends or go to yeah. the library. But I get to Minnesota, and we go to the children's hospital once or twice a month. We we have a turkey drive every year on um, the th- Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, Tuesday before Thanksgiving, if anybody's in the Twin Cities area. <laughs> and uh, it's so unique, though, because we set it up at our stadium. We have <laughs> we have we have hot chocolate. We have fire pits going. We have it's an event. It's an experience. We have Charlie Brown's uh, Thanksgiving going on a inflatable uh, okay. blow up, yeah. and we have about forty players that pass out stuffing. It's a whole Thanksgiving meal, oh, and nice. our players are out there at night, and it's somewhat cold, but they want to be there serving and giving to the community. Then we go to the Ron McDonald House, and they give to the Ron McDonald House. Um, you know, we read to students at the elementary schools. We have a bunch. We had trick or treat. Um, uh, this past year at our facility and kids really? went to every level and our players dressed up in different costumes and passed out candy at different points in the office. And, you know, it's just, it, it's one of those just unique things of just to see those kids in the hospital who can't leave. And now even with COVID, I mean, I remember um, at the children's hospital at Minnesota, there was one young lady whose mom had to stay with her. Her mom could not leave the hospital. Her mom could not leave the room and it was just her daughter and the mother, and she had two brothers at home and a dad, and they couldn't see each other for like three months, wow! Because they had to be, they were stuck, and so, yeah. you know, and and even when you go to, um, you know, we were at the Outback Bowl this year, and we did a children's hospital visit down in Tampa, and I'm like, these kids don't know anybody from Auburn or Minnesota, yeah. But as soon as our players walked in, it was like, yeah, it was like Santa Claus walked in the door. They were so happy because people were coming to see them, yeah. You know, and and you hit it on the head, just you get way more out of it. It's all about perspective Mm -hmm. and just seeing somebody, whether it's at the children's hospital or just giving food to the homeless or whatever it is. It's just all about perspective for your life. And, you know, um, yeah, I was just saying about Carl Anthony Towns, but it's, it's okay. (laughs) Well, I mean, earlier you, you touched on, uh, you know, being a part of the Dover community and we talked about, you know, the little rivalry we had before we became friends. Um, and it, it wasn't was much of a ride. Yeah, it wasn't, so. but, you know, we were like, what, fourth, like, fifth grade, but. Like <laughs> Betty Ball block shot. Yes. Yeah. You don't bring it up, though. He remembers it, the block shot it he was, did. It was. Hurt my feelings. It was field six when Percy <laughs> oh threw my me a gosh, fastball. Here we go. And I hit a triple off of him. <laughs> and I never faced him again. Like, so he's was, batting a thousand. That was pretty much the route. So you probably should be, you know, a major league baseball player. Right? I didn't play baseball after seventh grade. Oh. Well, that's unfortunate. Um, struck out too much (laughs) (laughs) but uh so I mean obviously coach if didn't grow up in Dover and wasn't a part of the staff his whole life or whatever so I mean obviously you had to have a a transition and you know coming to the great city of Dover from (laughs) where you're from previously where you were at Perry Mm -hmm. um how was that was it even a big transition for you you were so young you were just like whatever I was still so young I we moved here in fourth grade but I didn't we didn't move here until I think I was in fifth or sixth grade so my dad commuted from Perry every day for the three years to start and then we came here um I remember moving and I remember driving out of our driveway in Perry and I was like so sad it's like this is my childhood home that I just had so much fun playing sports by myself um (laughs) in my front yard (laughs) But, uh, but no, you know, one of my first days, I don't know if it was my first day or the second year I was here, you know, what changed for me was when I went, met Micah mm. and when he became a water boy and that really changed my whole life. And obviously we're, you know, super close to this day, but that was, that changed everything in terms of personality, um, how he poured into me and then how I met you and Eric and I went to East school, which is at the time was the best elementary school. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I mean, you had me, you had Eric. I mean, that was like the best. And, um, but, but that's how just that's how the friendships are. But you know, Micah brought so much 
out of me at a young age, just in terms of being outgoing and enjoying life and being positive. And then you get around you and it's just, that continues yeah. like that infectious personality and that happiness and that joy. And then Eric just had everything we could want to play with, with <laughs> the basketball hoop that lowered that Steve never let us dunk on <laughs> to the awesome basement yeah. that we used to hang out in. But like, that's where, you know, it all started at a young age and just cultivated into this amazing friendship. And, yeah. you know, just to have that, you know, to be honest with you, to have that safe haven of a place where we could all hang out and just be ourselves was it was a blessing that not a lot of kids get to experience. That's true. I mean, a lot of times we were able, like, obviously, I, I don't know if I touched on it in other podcast episodes, but the weird thing is I've known you since we were, what, 10 or something like that, mm-hmm. 11, 12. And, you know, now we're 32. Well, you're 32. That's I ain't 32 yet. <laughs> uh, 20 years later, I feel like I actually have made a, you know, because I didn't know. Obviously, you don't talk about impact when you're in fifth, sixth grade, you're like, man, Percy, you really made an impact on me today. But, um, like, now that, like you said, you're diving into the Bible, you know, studying with Micah and just, you know, looking at it in a different way and having a different understanding and actually focusing and being intentional about it. It's just funny because you said, hey, the first episode, me talking about mm-hmm. it, I was like, it, like, really, like, made an impact on you. And I was just like, man, that's crazy. Like, 20 years, uh, and sometimes maybe that's how long it takes. Or I just feel like, you know, ha- not everybody has those relationships from childhood that can get that deep on that level. And, I mean, it does mean a lot because, you know, growing up we were silly, always having mm-hmm. fun, or playing football. That was really the only time we were serious is when we were on the field. And, you know, but just, uh, you know, one of my one of my fa- – I know this is, like, not what was going on, but one of my favorite memories about <laughs> Daniel is um, – when we we were playing Kashokton, and you know, I don't mean any harm to Kashokton, but we were playing them, and they they uh, they had thirteen men on the field, oh. and <laughs> before, you remember this? so we're running a play that we usually run, and um, I didn't pre- I didn't pick my receiver before the play, but uh, I just know I counted like three safeties, which is impossible, and I was just like, well, what's going on? Anyway, I hiked the ball. And <laughs> I throw it to Daniel, and there's, that's the example I was talking about with five people being around him. And, you know, the next day or, yeah, the Saturday we're in the film room, and Coach Jeff's like, I was like, because Coach, I was like, I think they had two. Like, it didn't make sense that five people were on Daniel. So Coach Jeff starts counting them with the laser. <laughs> He's like, well, what the heck's going on here? They have 13 men on the field. And that just, you know, you know goes to, I'm just pumping Daniel up. But it just, I, I owe him all these because all the times I laid him out and <laughs> – front of some danger on the football field <laughs> we won't talk about that i n- always had daniel safety in the back of my mind when i was playing quarterback but um also before we get in the you know more about our friendship and stuff like that down the road i just wanted to go back to some more questions i wanted to hit everybody so uh allison ashley smith he wasn't that good it's like no i'm joking <laughs> he was he was older than us so you know we, i got to watch him and he wore the greatest number ever number 10 he was originally um, number seven. No, I'm just <laughs> Ashley Smith ran the jet sweep like no other. Yeah, he was kind of slow. Um, <laughs> so Todd Bartley says, where does the game against Northwest rank in your minds? Now, which one are you talking about? Are you talking about the one that I kind of balled my eyes out after? the second, My second game of ever being quarterback? And we were, it's probably that one. That was a really good game. Yeah, yeah. We ended up losing, what, 44-37. Scott Weber, big old dude, ran the ball down our throats. Uh, and rest in peace to C.J. Law, the quarterback. Uh, oh, I think wow. he passed with cancer at a young age. I mean, well, he's our age, but I don't know how long it, it was ago. But he was a great quarterback. Um, I mean, for me, it was a great game. I and mean, we, what do you think? I I had struggled to remember a lot of things from uh, I the did. Games. And obviously, I said the score and everything. <laughs> oh, that was it. I was, don't hang on to memories at all. You know, close oh, the yearbook. That was the thing. Was we jumped out to such? I remember jumping out to such a huge lead, twenty-one nothing, and then we kind of just. Messed around a little bit, and um, but that was one of those. I think they're in Stark County. I think that was yeah. just, just one of those great Tuscarawas County Stark County games. Yeah. And then they came back down here the next year, and we beat them, which yeah. is awesome. I yeah. just I just remember Matt Reinhart running his one uh, jailbreak. We ran lockup, and he had like eighteen people on him. <laughs> I'm in the back of the end zone by myself. <laughs> There's nobody around. But thank God I didn't miss you. Now nah, you wouldn't know. <laughs> but that I mean, those were great games. Yeah, man. I love playing those out of conference games, you know. Um, Zach Gardner, 
from the the garden. No relation to me. I'm Garner, but uh, you know, family of all the Z names. Uh, for both of you, what advice do you have for current high school athletes about the recruiting process? So this kind of goes back to what you're talking about. Is a similar answer to, you know, what you're what told you. Patience. 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 Okay. So many student athletes nowadays just they think they need to have everything right away. It's easy for me to say it at 32, but for them, you know, we want things right now. Yeah. We've always wanted things right now. Um, patience, and it only takes one, and and you're going to end up where you're supposed to end up. Yeah. And, and go to a place, if you have the opportunity, go to a place that wants to have you on their team, or yeah. in, in their program, in their culture. Um, you know, I was fortunate where I ended up going. That they wanted me there, and, and it all worked out, but patience was the number one thing I would tell student athletes. All right. And uh, wait, also, did you incur copyright infringement? I have to play Nelly any royalty treatment. <laughs> I just want to read it to myself to make sure. He said, um, well, this is Ryan Metcalf. So he said, Dover, Philly, 100th game anniversary. Did you fumble the snap on first and third down at the goal line on purpose, preventing me from getting the touchdown? Laugh out loud joking. <laughs> I know the answer is no, but I would <laughs> I would have housed that bug either time. Just give me the <laughs> bloody ball. <laughs> I didn't, but I just wanted to run the option. <laughs> but no, he said, um, also, did you have to incur copyright infringement or have to pay Nelly for all the royalties for mi- <laughs> remixing EI to DI? If you guys don't know, you know, the old Nelly song, Hundle, Hundle, Mama, EI, EI. Well, we we mixed that to, to DI. I, I won't take credit. I don't know who did that. But, I don't either. Um, but I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, Daniel's nickname back in the the days. Um, was Di is. for Daniel Ift? In case you guys couldn't put that all together. All right, we'll do one more. Oh my! So Mrs. Sattler's on here, but we'll get to that one. I have to do uh, Tanner justice. <laughs> I'll let, let me make sure it's you know appropriate. Yeah, appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> so hey, Daniel, always wondered the popular football saying, "Fill up the gas tank." And if you had, and if you had heard it or known its origin, thanks. I haven't, but I'm going to assume it just goes back to high school when you used to throw me deep balls for touchdowns and it was just a score, and then your full your gas tank goes from empty to full. <laughs> you just bring people joy throughout their lives. All right. I like it. I like it. Because Dover, we, you know, football wasn't a big deal in Dover at all. So no, just, <laughs> We come from a community. If you guys don't know, if you're listening and you're not from Tuscarawas County, because I know I hone in on this area a lot, um, but it's, you know, Friday Night Lights – are an amazing thing and you learn a lot and we have a great coach here the field should be named after him um <laughs> but it was just a great experience he taught us all you know how to to be men and what i mean he i'm talking about daniel's dad dan ift um but yeah we we talk a lot about football and it's because of him and the community around us and what they all did for us um and we'll go to back to some more questions, uh, but I just want to, I guess, talk to Daniel about his opinion since Father's Day just happened. Um, growing up in the household, speaking of uh, the the Hall of Fame coach Dan Ift, um, what are your favorite things about your dad? Like characteristics or whatever it could be, how he made ribs or <laughs> whatever. Yeah, he didn't cook much. He he grilled. <laughs> he grilled, he grilled okay. but he wor- he was always at the stadium working. Yeah, um, that's true. Oh, you know, when he was, when we were sm- like little, you know, he would, uh, he'd spend as much time as he could with us. Obviously his main goal was us, but obviously his yeah. career and doing everything that he could to better our lives was his main goal. But, you know, we, uh, you know, we had the opportunity to yesterday, we watched some home videos that my sister put on DVD. Um, and it was so cool just to go back and, and watch memories of, um, you know, unfortunately, my grandpa passed away in January, so we uh, we got these done so we could kind of have more memories with, with him that we never lost. And so we were going back and watching them. And, you know, there were so many of them with us at my grandparents' house. And my parents would always complain about going up there because it was so hard to take three kids, yeah, you know, when yeah, you're yeah. little to drive up there. And it was an hour and some change to get there. Um, but we were talking the other day, and, and they said, you know, it wasn't that bad. You know, we made so many great memories with all my uncles and my cousins and grandparents and I made the I said to my dad yesterday that um, or today one of the shots of my grandpa's backyard we're all sitting there hanging out and my grandpa always had the radio on always and he was always listening to the Indians on the radio and in one of the videos 
it pans in my grandpa's radio, and it's Herb Score, who used to be the old Indians play-by-play mm-hmm. announcer, and it was him, and it just melted my heart. I was like, that's so crazy. Because uh, that's how I remember my grandpa. Yep, yep, and yep, having yep. his shirt off, tending to his garden. <laughs> that was my, I was my grandpa. Um, <laughs> you know, I would just say for my dad, the older I got, it was, it was like the more sweeter and better it got. You know, freshman and sophomore year were a little tough because I was – I was playing, and I was playing quarterback, and then we went to receiver. And I think when I, we became juniors is when I think my dad started to really – it's when I think my dad changed and had so much mm-hmm. more fun with what he was doing. Yeah. And I have to attribute a lot of that to Shake Your Tail Feather. <laughs> that was Another the, Nelly song. That was the first <laughs> rap song we played in the weight room for my I dad. I lobby for some rap in the weight room, y'all. And we got it. It was usually like The Killers, Paul McCartney, Kenny Chesney was on there a lot. Uh, Back in Black. Yep. What is that, ACDC? Yeah. See, I know a little bit of. But it was, but it was, I think he got so much joy out of watching all of us play. Yeah. And and he still loves it when I tell him, like, yeah, you know, we were on the Zoom call last night. And then he asked, like, well, how is everybody doing? And, yeah. um, you know, because my dad's still a dad. I mean, he doesn't, like, go out yeah. and hang out with people. He well, just, the, the one thing I did like. <laughs> he just sits at his house. But I, I, that's all I do now. Yeah, yeah. Like, Kate and I never go anywhere. We just sit at home, and I'm like, wow, I'm turning into my dad. <laughs> Krista gets mad at me for doing that. but um, I love it. The one thing I loved about your dad is, um, dang, what was I about to say? Oh, he never, like, when I got drafted, and, you know, a lot of people start tugging, like, oh, you you know, you my cousin, you know, whatever. He was kind of over the top with it. I'm like, look, I want you to be there. Like, you know, but he was like, no, you know, don't feel like you have to call me. Don't feel like anything. You don't owe me nothing. I'm like, coach, like. You know, I, I want to talk to you and stuff. <laughs> I know you're not, you know, going to ask me for money or anything, but, you know. Um, but I, I, I admired that he was like – and I feel like my dad would have been the same. Like, you ain't giving me no money, boy, or mm-hmm. nothing like that. But it was just funny how C- Coach Ift, you know, he wanted to make sure because he knew – I I didn't know much. He would tell me, like, hey, it's, it's going to be mm-hmm. different now. And I'm like, yeah, okay. And then I started seeing it happen, and it was just – you know, it's funny just the, the lessons that you don't think are that important – you know, they come back and you're like, when it's actually you're in the moment, you're like, whoa, you know, so. It's funny, the older we get, the more, like, the lessons are starting to come back. Yeah. Like, for me, it's like, wow, I he told me this a long time ago, and now it's here. Yeah. I used to think I was right when I was 17 years old about <laughs> everything, and I never was. And yeah. I start to see it now, and, uh, you know, it's it's fun. And, yeah. you know, the fact that I, I guess I just have a different luxury because I get to talk to him whenever I want. Yeah, You yeah, know, yeah. not that he wouldn't answer anybody else's phone calls, but. You know, when it's your high school coach, you don't usually talk to them as much as yeah. my child does. So I kind of get that luxury. And, you know, we talk probably. My mom and I talk every day. My dad and yeah. I kind of talk like three times a week. Yeah, you, you guys are men. You know, <laughs> we don't talk. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I I got, a, I guess, a different question. Was it just obviously going to be football for you, with your your love for sports and all that with your dad, him being a coach? Or did you, you feel like you found that? on your own or you just was like, you know, my dad's coach, it's just kind of there and it just, you happen to love it too. Or I think it was just, I just happened to love it. You know, when I was a little kid, it was baseball was the first thing I loved to do. And then it was football and basketball was always there, but we didn't get a hoop until probably I was third grade when we got our first hoop. And then we moved. And then you were forced to make it because if you missed, it went down that deep hill. This was at Perry. <laughs> oh, okay. And then we moved to Dover, and I had that deep hill. So that's why I love shooting the corner three so much. <laughs> but, um, you know, like from a career standpoint, it didn't start for me until I was in college. And I thought, what am I going to – like any kid, what am I going to do with my well, life? Well, from, from what I understand, sorry to cut you off, but – I thought you were going to be, you know, ESPN analyst. That's what I thought. And then <laughs> I enrolled in telecommunications and I had to take a foreign language and I wasn't sharp at taking a foreign language. And so I was like, I'm not doing this. Like I, I there's no way I can juggle this. Now, Ball State has one of the the best um, telecommunications program in the country really? with SportsLink. Wow. But anyways. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's what I wanted to do. And uh And then I I was about to graduate, and I didn't know what to do. And so I thought, if I can become a GA and get my master's, I can buy myself two years to really figure out what I want to do. And then I can figure out if I want to coach, and I didn't want to coach. And for those of you who don't still don't know, a lot of people ask me, how's coaching going? (laughs) Not from this area, just in general. I'm like, I don't coach. (laughs) I don't do any coaching. Even Um, at at Michigan, you weren't coaching either. mm, I was recruiting. Okay. Um, but no, to just answer your question, it was just one of those things where you're around it so much, it just becomes a part of your life. Yeah, yeah. And I've been fortunate now that I'm with somebody who 
it's a part of my life, but our head coach understands the meaning of family. And so I get a lot of time with my family and they're always welcome to the facility, which is awesome. Yeah. And that's why I love my current job with Comdoc and they, they know what's important mm-hmm. and you know, no one's going to die if they don't get a copier. What's that? <laughs> but then it goes back to like that mental health. I mean, you got to have a work life balance and you got to have, you know, work's obviously important and we both work a lot, but it's all like our, our my head coach understands that if you know, you need to be with your family too. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, now nah, obviously it was father's day and we know the, the figure that your dad is, uh, but you also got a hall of fame mom. So, uh, I guess this is kind of a harder question to answer if I was asked, but I'm gonna ask you, what does your mom mean to you? You know, like I, I hate, I don't hate, I just dislike people like, Oh my, she's my rock. My mom's my rock. <laughs> hey, when I was asking that question, I was visualizing your answer being that <laughs> because no, just because like I think of a rock, like, I just think of something that's hard. And yeah. I know it's solid and it's there, but, yeah. um, you know, my mom is truly one of my best friends. I have the luxury of having two best friends as my role models and my parents. So. And, you know, my mom had to take a lot of the burden when I was a young kid growing up just because dad was that my dad was always at the facility or we were, we were, I was playing and him and I weren't speaking. And so my mom kind of had the brunt of it all of it. Yeah. And, um, you know, my mom's such a loving person and her, her love is infectious, not only for myself, but for my wife and for my friends. And, uh, it's so cool to see my mom now, as a grandmother to my sister's children because just to see how joyful she is around them. And obviously she's joyful with my brother and my sister and I, but to see little ones in the joy. It's so different. It's so different. (laughs) And I think the greatest thing my mom ever instilled in me was just love, but also the love for Christmas. Like my mom and I love Christmas. Like we talk about, like I, it would be a point where I'd buy my mom a new Santa for our house, like a little Santa that goes above our, our uh, kitchen Every year for like 10 years, I did it. Really? And it was just one of the things that we just, I'd always ask her questions like, mom, you know, if, if I'm able, ever able to have a family, like, what's that like as a parent to watch your kid open presents? And she's like, oh, it's one of the greatest things. It literally feels like Christmas morning again. And I'm like, wow, that's so cool. It like, is. I can't wait to maybe do that one day. But then I got to watch my sister's kids open them this year. And it was one of those like, this is so unique to see yeah. and just see the joy in a child's face. But, you know, I talk to my mom every day, that's what's uh, whether it's, it's sometimes say time, but it's all, you're always on the phone whether I'm coming to work or from work. So her and I talk every single day and I'll be like, what's going on in Dover? And she's like, well, nothing since yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. But, um, it's funny. Cause that goes back. You talking about the watching the kids open presents. That goes back to like your team helping mm-hmm. out, you know, people yeah. who don't have grocery stores. Whenever you help someone out or you give someone a gift and you see them open it, it's weight. Like it's a great feeling when you have your list, you know, when you're a kid for Santa and you get your presents, you're like, this is amazing. Yeah. But when you give a gift to someone and they have that same feeling, it's like, it's extra special. Um, and I like the first Christmas, <laughs> you know, I didn't have a lot of money and we got purse, like stuff that he needed. Mm-hmm. He was six months old, so he didn't really care anyway. Yeah. But we started to record it. We're like, all right, open your presents. It was like socks, a couple onesies. <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, let's just not record this. <laughs> let's just yeah, delete but it's this one, footage. But it's one of those things that's that's a memory that's just so unique to have. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's, you know, I didn't, when we were growing up, we didn't have a surplus of Christmas gifts. Yeah. But we had just enough, and we had everything that we needed. And sometimes you'd be like, wow, I, how did you, I, how did you know? Yeah, yeah, like, I wanted yeah. The, yeah. It, it was so cool, and it it's just crazy. things that you learn from your parents that you want to pass down to your own children one day, hopefully, and, and so on and so forth, so. Yeah. It's pretty unique, but my mom's, she's my best friend, not my rock. That's what's, <laughs> that's funny though that you said that. Cause I was really, I was like, that was in my head when I was like, all right, I'm going to ask this question. All right, let's go. Let's go back to, uh, Mrs. Sattler's question. She, so <laughs> it's going to be about blow pops. <laughs> it's going to be about purse hitting his forehead on her mantle and eating stitches. <laughs> she had a white carpet. That was scary. Um, what did you do slash go on Friday nights after games, both football and basketball? Great times. I think she knows the answer to this rhetorical question. (laughs) But there's two parts to it. There is, there is, there is, there is. Part one is during football, we would go to the Williams's for like four straight years and they would just have endless amounts of food. Never know where they got it, but we always have it on Friday nights (laughs) after games. It was so fun. But again, that was just one of those safe places we could go and be together. We weren't those crazy kids like... I'm not saying the kids are crazy, but, like, we had parties with, like, our parents there. We weren't, like, drinking. I was just excited about, like, the Keebler cookies with M&Ms in there and stuff like that. 
Yeah, it's had an endless amount of Gatorade. So yeah. it's a great place to <laughs> refuel after games. Yes, yes. Um, but you never got any sleep. Yeah, it's true, true, true. Because Percy <laughs> kept me up. Because I was loud, no. Shocker. Um, <laughs> and so we would go to the Williams' during the fall, and then the Sattlers, um, we would go to the Sattler house during basketball season and stay there every Friday night, all kind of late. It would be like 12 bodies. <laughs> Same at Eric's house, just like 12 bodies yes, laid out across the yes. floor. But, you know, I think if you ask Steve and Julie and if you ask um, the Sattlers, I, I think they'd say those are some of the most memorable times in, in, in their children's lives that they remember yeah. because they got to be around everybody. And they were a part of so many of the memories we created, not only on the field but also off the field. And so it'd be the Sattlers – uh, and the Williams would be the two places. Yeah. Um, Mrs. Howard always had blow pops. It was like <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the one thing I loved about uh, that moment we had with Kyle, because um, you obviously you were my number one receiver, and then Matt, and, you know, I threw you guys the ball a lot, but I felt bad. We were going into the playoff game, and Kyle's like, hey, uh, Purse, uh, you know, just didn't, he was, like, so shy about it. He's a sophomore. You know, I'm this big senior quarterback he didn't want to talk to me and I was very mean no, I'm joking but um he's like yeah um uh I'm not sure if you know but you know I'm the only receiver that doesn't have a touchdown <laughs> I was like what I was like no you're lying um he's like no I swear and then Mike was like yeah purse no TDs <laughs> I was like oh no and it just so happened literally like we didn't plan it you know coach if one like hey we got to give Kyle a touchdown I think it was like the first play from scrimmage. Mm-hmm. I like get flushed out of the pocket, you know, using my wheels to escape the pocket. <laughs> and I literally flicked the ball to Kyle, just trying not to take a sack. And somehow he takes it like 60 or 70 yards for a touchdown. And it doesn't end there. So he gets his first touchdown. And then seriously, I think defense comes out with an incredible, uh, incredible stop. And then like the first play again, we do, you know, special bubble. And he catch, almost drops almost the slide. Come on, Kyle. Almost drops the slide. <laughs> But catches two TDs and like two catches, his first two touchdowns of the game. So that was that was one of my favorite moments. And also, I have to bring up, you know, uh, rest in peace, one of the funniest guys ever. And I was always jealous of him because I always wanted to dance like Michael Jackson, but he could do it better than me. And that that's Matt Compton. And I know the Dover community; uh, he means so much to us. And uh, he was he was another uh, another I guess star of the show uh, of the party. Um, at, at the Sattler's house. Oh, yeah, and, it was. You know, him and, uh, you know, the other quarterback that wasn't as good as me, uh, Corey Lasowski. <laughs> CeeLo. <laughs> CeeLo. But, no, all those all those times were good. And, uh, uh, yeah, Josh played too, right? <laughs> I held down the sideline very well, guys. <laughs> Josh was just a swole. Josh yeah, was Josh swole. Was swole. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't move then. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't move. But, um, arms up. <laughs> Uh, I love that we got Tanner in here. That was great. Um, Nicholas Ift. So your family's big out here. Who is Nicholas? Is that your nephew? It's Joey. Oh, it's Joey's brother. It's my cousin. Oh, okay, okay. It's the youngest. It's the youngest Ift. Oh, okay. Um, if you could relive your lives, knowing what you know now, would you do anything different? Wow. Come on, man. I thought you asked like a football question. No, I wouldn't. To be honest with you, I wouldn't because. Yeah. I learned so much from Minnesota in terms of failure equals it's, it's growing. And so yeah. I failed so much for those six months, but I've, I've grown so much as a person. And then even like we talked about in the past six months, grown so much from a spiritual standpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, it's love been it. awesome. Like I love where my life is. I love the conversations that I'm having with everybody. And I love the dialogue and the education that I'm getting from different, different individuals. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't change anything. Yeah. Um, that's still a good question. Um, only thing I would change is, you know, I'd work more with Daniel on my speed. No, I'm just, <laughs> no seriously, um, I don't think I would change anything either. Uh, I know both my parents passed when uh, my dad, my freshman year, um, and then my mom in 2014. But um, I just feel like, you know, like you said, it's just, you know, God has a plan, and I feel like that's just part of the plan, and that made me that molded me is a part of who I am. You know, my mom was like, like you and Jill, he goes, the the friendships you have. And, and, you know, my mom was someone that was, she would get on my case, but she wasn't like my dad. My dad was like, you know, military, like mm-hmm. uh, do this, you know? But then again, at this age, I feel like I'd have, you know, a total different relationship, just like you do with your dad. Um, but I don't think I would change anything either, man. I just, I love all the failures I had, just like you said. And it's weird to say you love your failures, but, 
if you think about it, if you look at like over history, Michael Jordan had a commercial about all the times he failed. It's when you look at sports figures and, you know, hate to always bring it back to sports, but um, that's what taught us life and how to be men and, you know, discipline and responsibility and just looking out for each other is all a part of sports. Um, I think it's just funny how you learn so much from, especially watching film. We are, we're always supposed to look for, you know, where we mess up and learn from it. And, um, it's just, it's magical how those little moments, you know, me and you getting kicked out of film session. Um, I don't know if you remember that, but <laughs> your dad kicked us both out. That was hilarious. Um, but just, you know, you know, I'd be like, no, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Being able to, you know, look at your mistakes and not let it haunt you. Like I did at some points, um, with baseball. Um, but I think it's just important, you know, not to overlook mistakes and not to just, you know, be even keel. Uh, um, and just know, hey, this is what I did well. You know, not to celebrate it too much, but also not to harp on your negatives so much as well. Just, you know, know that, hey, I must improve on a day to day basis. And, uh, you know, never, I know that was a long answer to that, but, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't change anything. I guess that's where it goes. Uh, and if you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? <laughs> I don't know. I've, to be honest with you, I've never watched a Marvel movie. Oh my, get out! <laughs> so I don't, I don't really know. Um, my superpower would be, I guess maybe flying. If I could just get up and fly, because then that would help me a lot. Living nine and a half yeah, that hours would be away. amazing. I would, <laughs> I would say, being a mind reader. Is there a, a hero that's a mind reader? Is Vision a mind reader? No. I don't know. I think he can probably do just about anything. Though. Yeah, true. Yeah, one isn't of those. A, isn't that a Mel Gibson movie? Like a what women, what want? women want? That what you want to do? <laughs> okay. That would be amazing. Um, no, I like being ignorant sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I guess that's true. If you're hearing everybody's thoughts, would be terrible. But um, man, uh, that was. I appreciate everybody with. The, oh, one more. Kelly Page. <laughs> Who was who was your favorite recruit to host, Daniel? <laughs> Probably Briggs. Ooh, Briggs or his bond? Because Briggs didn't want to do anything. Briggs just wanted to eat and then go back to his hotel room. That seems just like Briggs, man. It does. But Briggs is ridiculously successful right now with two beautiful children and an amazing wife. So Briggs got it right. Yeah, Briggs, he, you could just tell he was going to be – Good at whatever he does. But Kelly's getting married, so congratulations to him. Ooh, congratulations, Kelly. And for all you don't know, Kelly Page was a number 12 uh, ranked QB uh, coming out of Texas, and he was a recruit who stole my spot at quarterback at Ball State. And then um, – <laughs> but thank you, Kelly, because then I played baseball and <laughs> I became an Indian. So uh, thanks to you. Um, but no, Kelly, man, I appreciate you. You and Tanner from the old BSU – uh, uh, you know, asking some questions for good old Daniel. Uh, too bad we didn't get no no Sam Woodworth or uh, Koontz in here. But um, uh, what, what, what would you? I got a question. Who are your best friend? I, and this might be hard to answer. Who are your best friends at Ball State? Well, Besides me, of course. <laughs> well, Baker. Oh yeah, Bay. Sean Baker. Sean Baker. Now LSU. Oh yeah, I just saw that. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, he was and. All the guys that love us, it was Switz and Putty. Oh, Switz. Parky. Mike Switzer, he's got a baby, too. Yep. Switz is hilarious, man. And, and then uh, Pete. Pete ended up transferring oh, to Weber State. Pete. But Pete. Pickle will – can't Pickle say will. the rest, rest of it. Pickle will be. <laughs> Do you remember? Pete. Was his name. <laughs> so those are the guys I lived with. And then, you know, Tanner, Kyle, Sam, and Knip. Oh, yeah. My bad. Knip, oh, man. That guys. hair. Yeah, he hasn't had that back. But he's a firefighter now. So. Oh, wow. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, Canil. But, yeah, those are all our, our Ball State buddies. But, no, um, I think we should, I guess, call it a day. How long has it been? Hey, you're a little over an hour right now. Yeah, hey, we out here. Let's go. I plan these perfectly. See, this is all down. <laughs> but, no, um, I appreciate Daniel for stopping by, you know, flying around. You know, with a super cape coming from Minnesota, St. Clairsville, St. Clairsville. Um, you know, you didn't stop by Steubenville to say what's up to our uh, old uh, Zach Kalaris friend. No, but I have talked to him a couple of times on Twitter. Really? Yeah. He, he won the Great Cup last year, so. Yeah, he's doing big things. Like kudos to him. Yeah. But, um, but we drove for COVID safety. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We didn't fly. Well, I was talking about your superpower. 
But um, <laughs> see, that's I what I thought you were talking. About. I don't get superpowers. <laughs> I don't get it. Um, but no, I appreciate you having you. Pre- appreciate having you here. Uh, also appreciate Josh everything he does, which is nothing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, we love having a good time. Also appreciate Kyle <laughs> for last episode with C. You know, went long. Uh, and your wife probably yelled at you, but uh, appreciate everybody. And uh, if you guys are listening on YouTube, make sure uh, if you want to, because not everybody has YouTube premium like me, because I love YouTube. Uh, so when you turn off your phone, the episode stops. But if you want to finish the episode, you can go to Apple, iTunes, and finish the podcast. And make sure you give us a five star rating because we got 19, but no one's leaving comments. <laughs> if you want to do a five star rating, leave a comment, I will read it next episode. So do that, uh, and we want to get to a thousand uh, five star ratings. I'm not even looking at the camera; I'm looking at the board. But whatever. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I appreciate everybody who's listening. Whoever subscribed to the channel, appreciate it. Um, and yeah, man, Daniel, we, we, you had to leave us with uh, a thought of the day. Wait, what's what? What do I say with Coach Bond? Uh, Coach make Bond, it, <laughs> make it a great, make day it a not. great day or not. The choice, choice is, yours. is yours. Thanks, Mr. Bond. But. I legit have to leave a great comment. No, no, you don't. I just you can say what's up. Uh, peace, all y'all. Holla for a dollar. I just find the positivity in life. Mm, like it. Find your paradise. Yes. Uh, but yeah, like I said, appreciate. I, my outros are awful. I say appreciate you guys eighty five times, but I really do. Um, Love my wife. Yes, uh, Kate. Oh, we didn't <laughs> Ooh, get to Kate snuck Turpentine. It in there at the end. <laughs> Kate Turpentine. Uh, Kate Ift. We uh, Daniel appreciate you. Very much. And I wanted to bring you up. I'm sorry. Don't hit me. Um, But yeah. Appreciate Get Level Podcast Network, baby. And y'all check out Dogs Podcast, the Adams Board Podcast, Alcohol, Drug, and Coalition Podcast. Check them all out. Subscribe to them now. Peace. Shouting you.